Hello everybody and welcome to JTV. So there's been a huge amount of requests, at least from what I've seen in the comment section of our videos, for us to talk about the seven Noahide laws, the laws in the Torah that apply to all of humanity, not just uh, Jewish people. And I suspect that's probably because we have a lot of non-Jewish viewers watching JTV, which is such a delight to know that, um, because the ideas that we're discussing are globally relevant, which is part of our tagline. Um, so let's talk about them. These are laws in the Torah that we believe that Jews say apply to all of humanity, not just Jewish people. So this is really relevant to everyone. So these laws began um, at the very beginning of human history, at the dawn of time with Adam and Eve. There were actually just six commandments at that point, from what I understand. And those six commandments were as follows. Don't worship idols. Worship God, obviously. Do not blaspheme God's name. Don't, you know, take his name in vain. Do not uh, uh, misconstrue who, who God is. Um, that's what blaspheming his name is. In fact, Rabbi Sachs wrote a, nice, a book about this, which I think the title really embodies this concept called Not in God's Name. Don't do things in God's name that are don't represent or reflect God's or God's will. Don't murder. Don't steal. Do not commit sexual sins. And in create courts of law to enforce these rules. The proof that these laws applied from the beginning of history is the fact that God holds Cain accountable for killing Abel. If, if the, you know, do not murder was not a, a uh, commandment, then why would Cain be held accountable? But he is. After the flood of Noah, when Noah enters the world again after the flood, um, there is a seventh commandment which is added. God said it is now permissible to eat meat. Before that, God just said from the fruits of the trees you may eat. That's what he told Adam and Eve. And now he said it's permissible for you to eat meat, but you, there are certain conditions. You may not be cruel to animals. So that means that you can't, you know, be wasteful. You shouldn't cause them unnecessary pain, shouldn't be used for sport. And so that's the seventh of the seven uh, Noahide laws, the seven laws that apply to all of humanity. Um, and it's given that name, I, I, I believe, because Noah was the one that received um, these seven laws and this seventh law. Um, and so that's the seventh one. Do not be cruel or give unnecessary pain to animals. So there we are. So these are the seven laws that apply to all human beings. However, this isn't the end of the story because there's actually an extra condition that applies to keeping these laws. And this was brought to my attention by a video that I saw on this subject by Rabbi Manus Friedman. And he said, it's not enough just to keep these, these laws or rules because uh, a lot of people out there aren't stealing, they're not, they're not murdering, they're not worshipping idols, uh, at least in the traditional sense, although there's lots of modern idols that we worship, um, celebrities, football stars, etc., etc., money. But the Rambam says there is a condition to all this, the condition of keeping these rules in order to do it in a righteous fashion, in order for you to uh, be considered righteous, is that you should do it because God asked you to do it. Now, why is that so important? I mean, if you did kept these laws, if you didn't steal, if you didn't, you know, not murder, didn't commit sexual sins because it made sense uh, or because it's practical, um, what's wrong with that? But according to Maimonides, uh, the Rambam, that is not considered righteous. Now, you can ask the obvious question, who cares what the reason is for why you don't do these things? Either they're good or they're bad. Why is it not acceptable to follow commandments because they seem right or good for the world? The answer is because the commandments were given for a very specific reason, which is to establish a relationship. At the Mount Sinai revelation, and it's interesting we call the word revelation because it's really saying God is revealing himself to us, revealing his essence, revealing his, his needs, making himself known to us. At Mount Sinai, God was basically saying, this is what I need from you. He was saying, I want to have a relationship with you. I want to share my existence with someone because up until the creation of the universe, I existed by myself and that was unacceptable. And so I am here to tell you that the Torah represents who I am, my likes, my dislikes, what, what, what I really want and what I care about. And I seek a relationship with you. I seek to share my existence with another and you have the choice to do that, to, to follow my, my will, to take uh, interest and um, be uh, subservient to the things that I like and that I dislike if you want to have a relationship with me. And I can't force you to do that because otherwise it wouldn't be a relationship. It would just be 
a one-way street. So our half of the, the job is to keep his laws, not just keep laws because they make sense, but we're doing it because that's what he wants and that's a relationship. So if you take the laws out of the context of a relationship, i.e., you know, it's good for society um, or whatever reason, or it's pragmatic or utilitarian, then you're tearing apart the whole relationship. God is saying, these are my needs, this is what I care about, keep them and we become one. That's how any relationship works. Care about what I care about, you know, share our existence with each other and our lives with each other and our will with one another, then we have a relationship. And without that, we remain separate. So the laws of Noah, the Noahide laws, they're not there to make us good. They're there to establish a relationship between human beings and God. It happens to be that they are good for the world, but that's not the primary reason for them. So the Rambam is saying it's crucial that you do, that you keep these laws, if you want to do it for the reason that God wants, uh, because this is what God needs from you. The Torah's laws, God's mitzvot, are there for God to become comfortable dwelling in this world, for us to be, for, for earth, for humanity to become one with God, for him to be one with us. So that's the uh, caveat, the condition uh, upon which God asks all human beings to keep his seven laws, his seven universal laws, because only if you're doing them because God wants it do you do it to establish a relationship with him and to bring God down to earth. And when that happens, when all human beings follow these laws, which is what Jewish people have a responsibility to teach the whole world about, then on that day, all humanity becomes involved uh, in a relationship with God, each in their own way. And that is what we mean when we talk about the coming of Moshiach, the coming of the Messiah, the, messi the messianic age, the perfect world in which all human beings are having a relationship with God and where God feels comfortable dwelling in this world. I'm Oli Anisfeld and you're watching JTV.